I was born as a Muslim, and we were 10 children in our family, 4 boys and 6 girls whereas I was the youngest of all. From the age of 6, I attended Madrasa until the age of 19. By then, I was called, Hafiz of the Quran, which means that I was able to recite the whole Quran by heart from cover to cover. I loved Islam and was proud to be a Muslim, but I was not very pious since I did not perform all rituals perfectly. For instance, I did not pray every day five times. For me, Islam was a total way of life, and I was very devoted. I always called on Allah in times of need, for instance, when I was writing my matric exam. Islam was everything to me, and I refused to study any other religion. My father was an important Muslim in our community. He used to drive out demons and pray for people. My father made very sure that all of his children went to madrasa and observed the Islamic rituals. He took them out of secular schools and put them into Islamic schools. At the age of 20, I met a beautiful girl and fell in love with her, but she was a Tamil girl and not a Muslim. This was very upsetting to my family since, to their understanding, Tamil people were regarded as lower class people. My father beat me up and forbade me to meet this girl. But I was very much in love and met her secretly. I felt my family did not understand my feelings. After some months, I asked her to marry me. But she said, I cannot marry you since I am a Christian and you are a Muslim. It was a shock for me to hear this, and I said that in my tradition, the wife automatically adapts the faith of the husband. But she refused and told me that her love for the God she knows is bigger than her love for me. Unless I become a Christian, she would not marry me. I told her I could never become a Christian since that would mean serving three gods. That was the end of our meetings, and we did not see each other for about two weeks. Then I phoned her and said that I was willing to learn about Christianity, but she should learn about Islam. She agreed and started to study Islam, and I was prepared to go with her to church and listen to the sermons. So I listened to the sermons, but I was very critical and ridiculed the sayings of the preacher. I challenged her and said, how foolish can you be to believe all this rubbish the preacher is saying? On the other hand, I tried to convince her about the wonderful religion of Islam. But she was not impressed and believed that her God would speak and convince me in time. So I went on more Sundays with her to church. Unfortunately, my family found out that I was meeting this girl again and even going to church. They persecuted me heavily and beat me up. My sisters especially mocked me and spoke very badly about my girlfriend, they called her dirt. But I started to meet her secretly again because I loved her very much. One Sunday, the preacher was preaching about the love of God, and he was quoting John chapter 3 verse 16 and 1 John chapter 4 verses 16 to 21. It says there, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love, whoever loves God must also love his brother. These statements from the Bible touched my heart since I was searching for a loving God. Then I started to compare God in the Bible with Allah in the Quran. I realized that the God in the Bible is a loving God, whereas Allah in the Quran promotes hatred for other people who are not Muslims. It made me sad that my family had such hatred against other people from different religions. I concluded that the God of the Bible and the Allah of the Quran are different. This impressed me greatly since I longed for the true God who created and loves everyone. I went to the pastor and said that I wanted to belong to the God of love and embrace this faith, though I did not yet understand all Christian teaching, like the Trinity. Then I met a Christian friend who took the time to explain to me the difference between teachings in the Bible and the Quran. I am very thankful for Christian people like my friend, who are knowledgeable about Christianity and Islam and who are willing to explain to Muslim people the difference. Because of all the care and love I received from Christian people, my desire to become one like them grew steadily. In addition, I had a dream where I was sitting in church, and the preacher called me forward and prayed and blessed me with the words from John chapter 14 verse 6. This happened precisely at church the next Sunday. It was a wonderful experience, confirming that I followed the true way with Jesus. The reaction from my family and the Muslim people was just the opposite. They were full of hatred, the persecution grew, and they threw me out of the house and even had a burial service and explained that I did not exist for them any longer. They despised and disowned me. This was all very hurtful to me. Soon I converted to become a Christian, and I was very happy to follow Jesus.
My heart was filled with joy and true love from God. Then when I was 21 years old, I married the girl I loved dearly. God gave us three wonderful children. Later my father died, and the Muslims did not allow me to attend the funeral. This made me very sad. One day I had a vision of seeing my father in hell and asking me, Why did you not tell me about Jesus in the Bible? This greatly challenged me, and I decided to study more and become an evangelist. I attended a Bible college, and thereafter I became a preacher at a church. Together with my wonderful wife, we are witnessing steadily to the Muslim community about the truth and the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. It has not been easy since the persecution from the Muslims was heavy. At one stage, they even came and beat us all up and burnt our house. But through the years, the hatred decreased, and after 20 years, the Muslims accepted my witness and me, and some of them had become Christians. Now I am respected in the Muslim community, and sometimes Muslim businessmen call me to pray for them. I give all the glory to God for what He has done in my life and the lives of my family. God has blessed our church very much, and we see how God changes people's lives for the good. It is wonderful to follow the true and loving God of the Bible.